Voicemail 804-592-6160. Baby, we want to hear from you. Turn it up a notch. Pop up clean room. Everyday celebration. Take a true vacation. You deserve a day. You deserve a day off. Working for too long. Got to keep back. Tell my cell phone off. Wait till I get back. Ooh, ooh, yeah, this, yeah. Living my life with no regrets. So I title. Link up. Pull up on me. Ravishing son of a bitch over here. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there, you sick sons of bitches? You. <laughs> Woo. No, oh, you know I got my couple four Q in the big time, baby. Couple four Q in the big time. We heading on the road, and you need to swivel them hips. <laughs> Swivel them hips. And if you're a Yankee fan, you are simply. Oh, they don't know what to do. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the one, the only All Rise. We've got a little DS version going on today, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we little, do. That's uh, right. The people are calling it a Francis Friday, baby. I like it. I like I like Francis Fridays. <laughs> I Francis like it. Friday sounds good to me. You know, there's no the... better way to start <laughs> your Friday than Ross simply said, ravishing. Ross says, "Swivel them hips while Francis replaces them hips." <laughs> <laughs> he know he knows the vibes. Ra was up early, sent me a video. He was on the road bumping that Frank Reyes man. Ra knows how to get a day started. He knows how to get Let me a day tell started. You, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, that's the way you start a little lifey lifey, okay? I like to double up my words, okay? I like to double up my words, my words, okay? Okay? Okay. It's, it's, it's just part of what I do. But guys, welcome to the one, the only, all rise, all right? Grab a little cup of coffee in the big times. You guys already know the dealio. Cup of coffee in the big time, yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. We do got a lot of voicemails already loaded in. You guys know the voicemail number, 804-592-6160. It is also pinned in the chat. But we got a, a, a couple of things to discuss today. Of course, the Yankees about to head out on the road. 
But first and foremost, our New York Yankees currently right now, yet it's early, are indeed in first place at 10-3. and three. They were the first team to win 10 games, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? They were the first team to win 10 games. But the Yankees 10-3, and three, me and Francis were talking about this before we went live. The Baltimore Orioles are now starting to come on. Um, they beat up the Boston Red Sox, who, as Francis was mentioning, hasn't really played a good team. So this is where we are right now. We're in a good spot. We're in a good spot. Yeah. We can only play who's in front of us. So at the end of the day, you know, all respect to Boston for handling business early on in the season against the Angels and the Athletics. But once they got in front of a team like uh, Baltimore, their their true colors started to show a little bit and they got yeah. swept. Yeah, they got beat up, man. Um, Baltimore, yeah. me and France were talking about this, man. They're, uh, they're uh, obviously everybody already knows they're a good young team. Um, a lot of their youth is coming up and starting to pan out. You saw some of that yesterday. You know, Gunnar Henderson with a with a big homer to I think opposite field, right? Didn't he go Oppo in the? In I the think he did. Oh no, that extras? was Kowser. I think they both did. They both went Oppo. So I think Kowser they both went, went Oppo, Oppo early, and then over the later wall, Kowser's yeah. was to right field. Kowser was and, a bomb to right field in that inning. Yeah. I think it was the. I think it was an extras at that point. I think it was, it was the, the top of the 10th. It was, it was the 10th, the right? It was the 10th, And they yeah. just went off. They just unloaded. And you can see, yeah. you know, what that team has. And and the fun thing is, we have it too. You know, that's exactly. the other thing that I think people need to understand is that the Yankees have it too. We got Dominguez on the way back. You know, Spencer Jones has still not played from a sore neck. So I, I don't know if sore I'm neck, believing okay. that this is a sore neck anymore. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, you know, throw anything any negative out there or be concerned at something else, but it is kind of weird. Cause I think they got like what, six, six games in, but my man woke up with a stiff neck and he hasn't played to start the year at all. Not once. So hopefully yeah. everything's all right with him. Yeah. I mean, knowing the Yankees, you know, they're going to treat whatever injury concern there could be on a Spencer Jones. Yeah. They're going to treat it with kid gloves. So yeah, of course for all we know, but that's the thing because it's the Yankees, right? For yep. all we know, it is just a stiff neck and they're being super cautious or he's paralyzed from the waist down like Christopher Reeves and we're never going to see him because it's the Yankees. So you just don't know. You just right. don't really know. God forbid. Like the God last forbid, thing, though. God the last forbid, thing you'll ever hear, like with this club, it wouldn't, it shouldn't shock. That's the scary thing about how the Yankees have been mm-hmm. is that they'll come out of nowhere and be like, Oh, I need surgery on, on this or that. And you're like, that's the issue fucking, from a stiff neck. Exactly. Like what happened, bro? Like how did that happen? But Hopefully that's not the case and and he'll be good to go. We do got our first super chat. Let's get to that, baby. Thank you for being a friend. Rort Vet starting out hitting 368. It was a mistake letting him go. I'll bet you a $50 super chat versus a free membership. He out hits Wells this season. Ooh, Slim Lewis. That's a tough one, bro. That's a tough that's, one. Look. That sounds yeah. like free money to me. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds a bit like a, a little bit of free money right there. To, to think Ben Rortvet's all of a sudden going to become, you know, this unbelievable hitter because he had a, a decent start. I think we also got to recognize kind of what the Yankees already had. So to say it was a mistake to let a guy go who never hit above 200 with the Yankees, maybe even 180 with the Yankees, um, to let him go, he is out of options. I mean, who are you dropping? Are you dro- Are you going to listen to Eric Kratz and send down Austin Wells? And are you going to release Trevino, who the Yankees absolutely love? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, and they yeah, weren't going to little... carry. They weren't going to. They weren't going to get rid of Trevino and carry two lefty catchers. Right. That wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to carry three. He was. He was the odd man out. Everybody yeah. knew it. Yep. You know. Good for yeah, him. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Good for him getting. Yeah. Good for him getting off to a good start. Yeah. Chris Hogan says, "What a great way to wake up with all rise on Francis Friday." Love what y'all are doing and loving this as a way to wake up. And that's, uh, that's what we do over here. We make people happy. We make people happy. That is what that is literally what we're about over here. We yes, just make sir. people happy. It's part of what we do, okay? And when it comes to um, I, I saw somebody asking about the the game today. Uh yeah, so the game today starts supposed to start at 7 10 Eastern time here. Now, there is a little bit of concern because the weather is not good in Cleveland today. Um, I believe, based off what I saw earlier, it's supposed to be like 90-something percent chance rain the entire day. So there is a chance they may not get this game in. But if they do get this game in, Clark Schmidt on the mound, Carlos Carrasco on the mound. I'll ask Francis this. I think Clark Schmidt had the maybe, maybe the worst performance out of all Yankees starting pitching last time out. 
Yeah. Are you any level of concern for you with Clark or do you still like his stuff? Well, what you've seen from him so far? Uh, I got to say, I don't disagree with you. I think because uh, we we did all we did uh, designated spitters after the la after the Clark. Not immediately after uh, it was we, we went after heel, but yeah, he was the day before. And I couldn't argue with that take. It was probably the worst start of any of our starters to that yeah. point in the season. Um, Which is a good thing because we've pitched well. We exactly. really have. We've pitched well. We we have. We have. And I think even when, like, now that the week has kind of gone by and I saw the Strowman blow up on Wednesday, I still think that Schmidt start was the worst start that I, any of our starters yeah. have had. Definitely. I mean, because, you know, the Strowman thing was the typical quintessential, you know, you're not hitting your spots, and then the one guy gets you on a bad pitch yeah. and it's out of your hands at that point. You, you know, But Schmidt just didn't look good all around, right? Right. Um, Nothing. Am broke. I worried? Yeah, he was all am, over the place. Am I worried though? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no. Still, I think it's still worried. early. And the one thing that I love about Schmidt is that you know so far he's been there. Like he's been yeah. a guy who you can count on to take the ball every every couple of days when he's supposed to. And he's shown the ability to bounce back from you know the less yeah. than ideal starts in the past. So I think tonight's game. You know, weather permitting, it does. I did just pull up the Cleveland weather to look at it. And I mean, it's pretty solid 90 something percent through seven, eight, nine, ten. Around 10 p.m., it drops to 50 percent and then 11 to 20. Yeah. But it's it's pretty solid rain. So let's see what happens there. But this this is actually a big game for Clark um, to get yeah. back, you know, get back on the right side of things um, and, and really show that he's going to be able to pitch to those lineups that are diverse you know, with the left-handers, because I think that's the biggest struggle with him. He's just, if you feature a lineup that has strong left-handed batters, he's going to struggle. He's going to yeah. struggle. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, And I'll be honest, I, I'm a believer in Clark. I'm a believer in Clark. I feel like his velo is up. I feel like his cutter looks better. It does. Um, mm. I, I, The breaking stuff, you know, I, I don't feel like maybe I've paid enough attention to. Um, and like you said, his last outing is just one of those days when yeah. a starter doesn't have it. And let's let's be honest, he doesn't have the innings under his belt the way a guy like Marcus Stroman does. Exactly. Marcus Stroman handled it well. He kind of kept going to to uh, what his what his um his, his way of butter. pitching is. Exactly. Yeah. He kept, he kept going he to it. He kept to going to it. Whether he misses his spots or not, it doesn't matter. It wasn't going to really change his game plan. And mm -hmm. then if you remember for Stro. After that home run, I think the fourth and the fifth, he looked really good. He figured it out. It, that's, he figured it out. He looked excellent. That's what he happened. Excellent. He figured he figured it out just a couple yep. a couple batters too late, right? Yeah. So I mean, you know, that's what you're seeing right now. So Clark is supposed to start. Um, you would assume after that it will be followed, of course, by Luis Hill, and mm -hmm. then go right back to the top of the rotation in Nestor Cortez. Yankees will then move on to Canada and play uh, the little brother. Um, as I, as we were talking about how little brothers act and there may not be one bigger than Vladdy Guerrero and the <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays. Um, we'll go on and play them. And then we return home for what is it? Everybody. And why, why you day? I think? That's right. Something That's like right. That. We are Isn't it something like that. I think yeah, we I are like it. one week out, bro. I'm so fucking excited. Yeah, man. We're, we're as of right now, I saw a couple people saying in the chat, like eight days away. We're eight days away. I'll actually be in New York on the Yankees off day on Thursday. And we actually might have something planned. I don't want to, I don't know if we could commit to that already. I don't want to say anything too quick, but. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm co I'm committed. If I know you're Pete, committed, that's all that matters. I'm committed. I, I know Pete's committed. So. All right. Well, we'll, we'll say happening. it now. We'll say it. We'll say it now. We are going to have a live chat um, on the 18th, hopefully with some more team team members but if not me and francis will definitely be there uh doing a live i do believe i got a little bit of commitment from mario and kev but i got to confirm that but yeah. if anything guys we're going to kind of do something similar to what we were doing in tampa and the good thing about that is it'll be an off day there's no game exactly. we're going to preview the home series coming up um uh, of course game starting on the 19th with tampa so that'll be a fun thing to to be able to do with everybody but um, we'll, we'll get that locked and loaded for you guys. And we got a big super chat from Rod Thompson.
I know Raw's Raw's a big fan of the whispers. I know he is. He told me. <laughs> he told me he is. He told me he is. Raw says not nothing. Be? How can you not be exactly? Nothing frustrated me more than watching Judge pop up with the bases loaded, but make no mistake about this. This is Aaron Judge's team. He's the captain. Put some respect on his name. Judge and Soto will be in sync at some point during the year. And this was brought up a little earlier. And I want to talk about this real quick, too, because this is very, very true. The Yankees have done with a very, very tough schedule. Everything they have done without Garrett Cole, without, you know, Aaron Judge being Aaron Judge. So that's something I think everybody needs to, needs to keep in mind here. That yes, Judge is struggling, but you look up and see 10 and 3. Exactly. You know, getting a guy like Soto also means that if somebody else is struggling, hopefully he can make that up. And that's what he's done so far last year. Without Judge, what do we do? It was a mess. <laughs> it was it embarrassing. Was it was a mess. I'm Literally. not concerned about Judge. I'll just throw it out there. I'm at not all. concerned about him. No, me neither. Me neither. I don't think no. there's even cause to be concerned. If you look at the underlying numbers, uh, the nerds are going to get super excited with this. Uh, Francis yeah. talking underlying numbers. But if if you look at the underlying numbers, which you do have to do when a player of his magnitude struggles yep. to really see if there's something to be concerned about, there's not. Aaron Judge is still hitting the ball as hard as anybody in the league. Um and the expected batting average on a lot of those hits is still where it needs to be. So I hate this saying, but a lot of nerds would be right to say that he's just running into terrible luck early on. And yeah. eventually that luck is going to turn because it's Aaron Judge. So I'll let the nerds actually have it because it is Aaron Judge and I trust him to actually yep. make it turn. And there is some of that that you're talking about right there. Yeah, exactly. A lot of reds still. <laughs> yeah, there's still there's still a ton of reds there. You see the average exit velo. So it's not like Judge is not hitting the ball hard. He's he doing is, yeah. that. He's walking more than anybody in baseball. Mm -hmm. um, so th the funny thing about it is when I talked about Aaron Judge, I always go, all right, well, you see he's hitting 178. The guy's on base percentage is 367. Exactly. And that's, so, that, that's what you need to focus on, really, exactly, if you think about it. Exactly. Is he going back to the dugout? Or is he getting on base? Like, what's yeah. what's what's important here? Um, and that and and I'm glad you brought that up because 367 again is judge is judge going to get higher than that when he's going? Hell yeah! But that's not terrible. Oh yeah, not at all. And the other thing people got to remember too, with with all the walks that he's had, once Aaron Judge has a good week, he's going to be hitting 260, just 260, like 267, 280, like and that. it's going to be quick. It'll be just like that as long as he has a good streak of a couple of really good games a good a good strong week yeah man he's gonna be he's gonna be back and and ready to go so i i don't think it's unfair that fans are bringing up concern i think it's valid i think anytime a guy like like the captain like aaron judge that you're so used to doing so good all the time mm -hmm. starts to struggle i get it i understand that right i understand why they could be concerned i just want everybody to, rec to understand a couple of things last year in april judge hit five home runs that's it that's all he did. This is the type of player he is. He can have a month where it's like, I'm getting my feet under me, and then don't worry, I'm going to have 50 homers at the end of the year. Like, calm down, everybody. It's all right. Yeah. He's that type of player that can do that. <laughs> Judge, again, at five homers, he started extremely slow, and then he turned it on in the second half of April. Mm -hmm. What I'm expecting to happen is similar. I think by the 15th is what I'm giving, the middle of that month. I think you'll see two different months. I yeah. think you'll see a very poor part. And I think you'll see a very, very strong ending and finish to mm -hmm. April. That's what I'm expecting to see from judges. So, again, zero concern on my part. But I understand why fans are bringing it up. And I also say, just to put a button on the judge thing, it, if if he was playing this way after having a you know, regular spring where he hit well and did what he normally does, hit a couple homers and a couple gappers and stuff like that, yeah. and then the season started and he started this way, I would be a little bit concerned, like slightly, because I'd be like, damn, I wonder what happened from Tampa to here, like what's going on. But we all know Judge did not have a regular spring by any stretch of the imagination. He missed right. a ridiculous amount of time. He missed a, a, a slew of games where he probably could have been in games and the Yankees were like, there's really no need to rush it. There's an 162 game season. You're Aaron Judge. We know that you'll figure it out. The Yankees, trust and believe, the Yankees knew that this was probably how Judge was going to start, and they Correct. were perfectly fine with it because they Correct. knew the lineup that they built around him, right? Correct. 
So credit to them for for building a lineup that is able to sustain a slow start from him. Not only him, but him, Rizzo, not having DJ in the fold. Uh, yeah. You know, even Glaber hasn't been, you know, the the Glaber that we know, like when he's at his peak. So, right. but they built a lineup that can sustain that. And I think that's what we're seeing. So I, I agree with you. If, if, if it gets past, you know, 15, 20 and still seeing the same thing, maybe then. Maybe. Yeah, maybe you got a little concerned about injury and, and things like that. But, uh, yeah, Judge, Judge is one of the last guys that I, I really worry about. Um, I, I think he's going to turn it on. I think it'll be fine. Now, I mean, the one of the biggest problems we have, you ready for this one, mm. is that Soto guy, man. He, he's walking <laughs> too much at big moments. I mean, I, how do you walk in these big moments? I mean, how dare he say, hey, I'm not going to swing at bad pitches Oh, let me man. let Aaron Judge come up here and do his job. So if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, I, Francis knows this. I mm -hmm. hate giving into this stuff, but I have we have yeah. to talk about it yeah. because it's just so bad. So I got to talk about the Sal Licata nonsense right here. So let's go ahead and just, unfortunately, guys, I'm going to have us listen to this for a minute and 30 seconds. Let's go ahead. Took everything looking. Yeah. We'll get into that in a second. So wait, 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 let's get into it now. Hold okay, on, Rich, and hold thank on. you for the call, Rich. Wait, wait, get into what? Yeah, she's wait, looking yeah, for a walk. Suck. Soto's looking for, and I love Juan Soto. Yeah. And John Harper, my colleague at SNY, correctly predicted I would at some point go nuts about Soto looking for a walk. A walk is not as good as a hit. And when you have Judge struggling and you got the pitcher on the ropes, you got first and second in a spot right there where you need to do damage. Mm -hmm. You're Juan Soto. You need to do damage, not draw a walk. And Juan Soto's looking for a walk. Swing the bat, bro. That's what you want to get paid. Swing the bat. I don't care if he's a Yankee, if he's a Met. I cannot accept a walk in that spot from Juan Soto. That does not get the job done. Passing the baton is not what I'm looking for from Juan Soto. I'm looking for him to do some damage. Now, if you don't... Francis, I, got, I can't. I honestly can't hear anymore. <laughs> I really can't hear anymore. That is up there, honestly. And Sal, I, I don't know if Sal is, is... Look, I don't know much about Sal. I don't know if he's dumb. I don't know if WFAN's not doing well. I have no idea, but to me, this is to do exactly what a lot of people are doing. They're sharing it out and talking about it. Exactly. It seems like something you're going to do to get attention to what you're doing because let me just let everybody understand something real quick. Do you guys know why Juan Soto is going to be paid and getting paid? Because he walks. That's one of the biggest parts of Soto's game. Exactly. Is that he doesn't just go up there and swing at bad pitches to get himself out because, oh, I got to be the man. Exactly. Soto has an amazing understanding that I can move on to the next guy. I'm getting on base. So his idea there is if he's not getting good pitches to hit, he's supposed to figure something out to get a hit or hit the ball hard when he's not getting good pitches to hit? No. No. The game – so so – and I'm glad I'm glad you said it because that's what that's where I was gonna go, you know, on Lakata. It's it's not just with these comments, it's it's every comment. Every it's once There's a, a week. Yeah. Once a week at this point, he puts something out like this. And and this is what it's for. It's to get fans up in arms, it's to get people retweeting, you know, commenting and saying, This guy's a nutcase, he's stupid, he's whatever, but it's still engagement. It's still engagement. It's what it's it's the age old saying, you know, that it takes just as much energy to love something as it does to yeah. hate it. And that's what he wants. He wants your energy. Love or hate doesn't matter. He just needs your energy and, and it works. So but putting that aside. You hit the nail on the head with Juan Soto. Juan Soto's mentality is what's going to get him paid. Exactly. It's not. Do you want to get paid? No, Sal, he's getting paid. That is a <laughs> foregone conclusion. Yep. OK, there is yep. there is literally. Nothing that can happen this season that can stop him from getting paid other than like like a, some form of scandal or whatever because he's not Teflon like Shohei. But I was about to say a little Ipe action. Okay? <laughs> you know, say a little Ipe action. Do we have an, do we might, have an Ipe for Soto? Think, okay. Things might get a little bit messy, but that's why Soto speaks English. So <laughs> we're going to, you know, <laughs> this, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to cover all your bases. But it's that mentality that's going to get him paid. You, Facts. I mean, this is one of the greatest things about Juan Soto. This is what I've loved about him since he was on the Nationals. Yeah. It's his mentality. And he said it. It's so funny that Sal said this, you know, when he did. Because just a day prior, before the, the game before that, he said it in the postgame presser. He said, the thing about this team is that 
you know, no, nobody has to go up there trying to be the guy. I don't, I don't have yeah. to go up there trying to be the guy because I have Aaron Judge coming up behind me. You see, that kind of knowledge, that kind of understanding is what is was what separates the good players from the great players and yeah. the great players from the Hall of Fame players. This yep. is a Hall of Fame player. Yep. Okay. This yep. is why he is who he is because he knows that in that situation, Sal is wrong. A 100%. walk. A walk might be better than a hit. Yeah, of course. Because you're keeping ducks on the pond for yep. arguably the greatest hitter in the game. Yeah. And that that's what people tend to forget. And look, you don't change your approach because somebody else is is not hitting. Juan Soto does not sit there and go, look, you know what? Uh, Aaron Judge is not performing to the way Aaron Judge is supposed to perform. Soto's not stupid. Soto knows who's one of the best hitters in the game. He's not going to sit there and go, damn, I got to be more aggressive this at bat because the guy behind me who's one of the premier players in all of baseball, arguably top five hitters in all of baseball, I got to go do something for him. He's sitting there going, no, I'm going to continue this thing going. We're kind of riding the momentum. If it's up to him, it's up to him. If it's up to me, it's up to me. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is the difference there? And just to, to give a little further evidence to Sal's ridiculous point, which honestly, he'd have no way of winning in any type of debate. There's no way. And when you make a point, in my opinion, you should have some valid proof behind it. His valid proof is that when Soto comes up, he looks for a walk. Well, no. Sal, I'm sorry to tell you, that is probably one of the best approaches you can have in baseball. If you have an eye that good, does anybody want Jason Dominguez to come up and all of a sudden no longer walk? No. No. Don't you guys want him to be the person he is supposed to be? Which is a guy, a young kid with a very, very good eye, great speed, power, average, all that. We expect him to be that type of player. Let's say he comes up now and goes, you know what? That guy Spencer Jones is on the way. I got to change my game because he's on his way too. So I should start swinging at more pitches now. Yeah, what happens? What happens? And this is where, this is where people kind of have. I, I want to say like that amnesia. Yeah. Let me tell you what. What happens when guys don't come up with the Juan Soto approach is the 2023 Yankees Bingo. And, a, and a little DP action Bingo. becoming the slogan for the lineup. I mean, yep. Pete had to say that phrase so many fucking times last season. That I, 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 it, it was ridiculous. A uh, little DP action, a uh, little, little DP. DP it, it action, happened yeah. every. It, it seemed like every Daily. time they were getting momentum, they were getting guys on, they were getting ducks on the pond. Every time somebody came yep. and hit it to a double play, and you know how they hit into double plays. You know how guys end up rolling over into a double play, expanding the zone Bingo. and pressing when it's not there. Bingo. You can only go with what the guy on the mound is giving you. And if you're yep. Juan Soto, the guy on the mound is not trying to give you a cookie in Yankee Stadium as a yep. left-handed batter who could put that shit so far into the seats, they'd be looking for it until next season. He's not exactly. just going to... They're not just going to throw a cookie to him. They'd much rather... And as crazy as it sounds, in Yankee Stadium, they'd probably much rather say, if I got to put him on base, I'll put him on base and get a fresh count with Aaron Jones. Yeah, of course. That's once right. you fall behind That's to right. Juan Soto, once you fall behind to him, Pete, no where, point. what's the incentive to say, no, let me let me let me go after this guy? Let me go after No, and I and look, the the the, the thing about having this conversation is I wanted to have this conversation with facts behind it and just prove that this is not somebody with a legitimate opinion. This is somebody again in my personal opinion that's looking to get clicks. Looking mm -hmm. to get people to tune in, looking to get people to go, yeah, this guy's an idiot. Let me let me retweet it. Let me talk about this guy being an idiot. And the, I I wanted to come at this with facts. So again, as Francis just said, right? If I fall behind Soto, do I go after him? Let me tell you why most pitchers aren't going to go after him. There's your reason why most <laughs> pitchers aren't going to go after him. Thank you. Thank I don't got to say anything else. Do you see what we're looking at right now, everybody? Can everybody just? Everybody just screenshot this and send this to Sal Lakata and go, Sal, you're this. Uh, there's no debate with you. Just look at this. So he doesn't want to swing the bat, right? Yet he has top 93 percentile and hard hit percentage this season. He doesn't want to swing, though. Do you know why he has? He barrels the ball. Do you know why his exit velocity is top 97? Do you understand why his, his hard hit percentage is top 93 percentile? 
because he swings at pitches in the zone that he can barrel up. That's exactly. why Soto's exactly. getting paid. Because of the thing that you don't think he should do, having the best eye in the game, and he walks if there's nothing to hit. That's yeah. why he does what he does. That's why he's going to get paid more than anybody in baseball. It's that simple. I'm going to tell you right now. All you parents, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If you're a parent, if you're a coach, if you're anybody who's anywhere around younger. If you're the president of the Little League. like Younger like minds. Exactly. Right? Like our boy Kev slash Percy. And you're, and you're shaping the younger generation, the players of tomorrow. And you want to give these kids a tip that's going to be worth its weight in gold when they're older. You tell them this. You want to know what gets you paid? Mm-hmm. Pitch selection. Yep. Pitch selection is the one thing that as a hitter has never gone out of style. Never gone nice. out of style. Pitch selection is your bread and butter because even the best power hitter in the world cannot hit a home run if the ball is seven feet outside. Exactly. You cannot swing at that. How many times have we vilified John Carlos Stanton for swinging at sliders two feet off the plate? What do you think yep. Stanton's trying to do? I'll tell you what he's trying to do. He's not trying to walk. He's exactly. not trying to walk. He's yeah. trying to he's trying to make something happen. He's like, I'm a power hitter. Yeah, I got guys out here. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Slugging percentage. That's me. This is what I do. Juan Soto is probably the most selective hitter in the game today. And that's why his savant looks the way it does. Because everything he puts a swing on is a pitch that he can do damage with. Yep. And I don't want, Facts. to be honest with you, I don't want him expanding the zone. I don't want Never. Judge expanding the zone. Never. I, Never. I don't, what I love, I mean, we spoke about Volpe's start on the last episode mm-hmm. of DS, and we lauded him and praised him. What, what What's one of the things that we spoke about? How His much eye. more selective he's looking. Yeah, he's not chasing. He's not chasing like he was last year. He looks so much more selective up yep. there that I think even the pitchers, are kind of like trying to figure out, okay, so then, like, because last year, you know what the book was on Volpe. If I if I throw that fastball up, his eyes light up. He's not Correct. catching up to it, Correct. but his eyes light up. He swings at it. He's going for it. And this year, he's spitting on it. Or yep. he's fouling it off. Yep. And you're going to have to come in. At some point, you're going to have to come into him. Or guess what else he's doing? Walking. <laughs> you know, the, the craziest thing about Volpe, too, and guys, we're going to get the voicemails right after this, is... He really has the approach that a guy like Derek Jeter had. And I hate even bringing up the name because I don't want those comparisons. But Jeter was so good about going the other way. And like you said, being selective and not chasing. That when a pitch was in, he can also pull it for power and drive Mm -hmm. the ball out. You're seeing that with a guy like Volpe. And this is why all of us here were just saying you got to flatten that swing out. Mm-hmm. You you gotta that needs and even if the power dips, you're still gonna homer, yeah. Because he does have that ability. It's still at Yankee Stadium. There's gonna be porch jobs. You still got enough power to pull a, a slider out to left field, which he showed that already this year. Yeah. So he showed it multiple times. That one ball that he hit the three on homer was an absolute bomb to left. Yeah. So Volpe got the power with the swing he's utilizing now, but the approach just makes him a different player. It's not a different chapter. I keep saying it, man. It's a different book. This is just a new player. Forget <laughs> about that. La- you can't I even bring that. up last year anymore. You can't yeah. talk about it because it's nowhere near the same guy. No, I love it. It's 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 a hundred percent right. And and what you're saying about approach, if you don't if you don't want to take it from Pete, you don't want to take it from me. Take it from the best hitters in the game. Aaron Judge yeah. will tell you all the time. I'm not going up there trying to pull the ball. I'm going up there trying to hit it the other way. Juan Soto, how many times has he been asked since becoming a Yankee? Hey, you're a Yankee now. You're going to be playing half your Mm -hmm. games in the Bronx. That short porch has to be, you know, tempting, right? And he says, yeah, it is, but I'm not going to change my approach. I'm still going up there trying to hit the ball the other way into the gap. And because that approach as a hitter is the best approach because you're starting, you're starting the, uh, you're starting going the other way and then adjusting to your pull zone. The issue when you're going up there pulling is that you don't have, you don't have the range to go this way. What you close, you're closing off two thirds of the field. But when a hitter goes up there with the approach of I'm going the other way, you open the entire field. Yep. That's what happens. That's why you're seeing the results with an Anthony Volpe with this new approach. That's right. That's right. 
Well, let's start getting into voicemails, guys. We got quite a few here. You guys know the lines already. 804-592-6160. We want to hear from you. Smacky that likey. Hitty that sub if you have not. We are 49 subs away from 24-6 as we try our best to hit 25K before April 20th, about a week away. It's going to be tough. It might come down to the wire. We'll see if we do it. But thank you guys anyway. Let's uh, continue on with the voicemails. <laughs> Hey, this is Respect from CT calling in. Okay. Uh, calling respect. about the Yankees, uh, their loss to the Marlins. Obviously, we can't win them all. The only thing I'm noticing is, uh, you know, some of the old Yankees, they're still doing, uh, you know, strike out or go for the home run thing. I saw in yesterday's game, uh, Torres did it. Trevino had a few pop outs. Uh, mm -hmm. Rizzo, uh, even judging that last at bat, you know, I know Judge, he's a home run machine, but still, you know, seems like the new way of the Yankees is like the Soto train that he's leading and even Verdugo you know like just hit the ball you know if it goes out it goes out but like move it to the next man and that's exactly what Soto did for Judge there but instead we popped out um I, I think the old Yankees need to like ship up or shape out you know as far as that goes <laughs> not Judge though obviously I'm not talking about him sh uh, shipping out but like they just need to stop trying to hit a home run you know just keep moving the ball let's get hits and, and speed you know I love this new way of the Yankees. We just need everyone to conform to that. Uh, the only other thing, Rizzo, he, I wasn't happy when they extended him. He looks bad. Uh, not even talking about his batting. Uh, you know, he seems like one of those home runner strikeout hitters, but his fielding, he, he, I remember him like being able to pick it all at first base. It seems like he doesn't bail out any of his, that concussion or something, but keep doing what you're doing, man. I love your videos. Um, I'm the one who called in uh, Mark from CT about, uh, you know, the Yes channel and Michael K and whatnot. Love watching you and uh, the other channel. I just can't get enough of your guys' content. Keep it up, man. Uh, I'll see you on the 20th, by the way. I'll be there. Awesome, man. We'll see you then, and thank you for the call in. Um, I guess where I'll start with that is, I mean, maybe, maybe you differ from me. I'm more concerned with Anthony Rizzo in the field right now than I am with him with the bat because mm -hmm. I don't believe it's been a home run or nothing approach with Rizzo this year. I, yeah, I've seen I, a lot I of Rizzo singles you. and line drives down the line to right field more than mm -hmm. that. I even seen a couple of base hits to left field over the, over the head. Rizzo's mm -hmm. never, never been a homer or nothing type of guy. It's never been his no. game. No. So I don't think, I don't think putting Rizzo in that uh, pool is, is the right thing. I disagree with that. His glove worried me. And it's funny because I was saying the other day, uh, I was telling Johnny this. It's like he has a new glove that's not broke in. He can't get a ball in his mitt. It won't go in his mitt. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, I don't know what to think about Rizzo right now. I think he's struggling. I think he's older. I don't know if anybody's expecting this this big hitter anymore. But I, I wouldn't put him in that category of homer or nothing guy. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I, I don't think that's Rizzo's approach at all. I just think the results haven't been there early on. Um, and again, it's 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 not, you know, saying that it's, it's not a big deal because I guess, you know, it is obviously we want everybody to perform to the, the way that we expect them to. Right. But again, with the lineup that Brian Cashman and co. have, you know, constructed, we are able to withstand this this start you know, from Judge and Rizzo and stuff like that. Correct. I do believe that they're going to come around because I'm not I'm not deterred by their approach. Mm -hmm. I'm, I haven't been deterred by Rizzo's approach because I'm seeing what you're seeing, right? Yeah. He still seems to have the same approach. Two strikes, he's choking up. He's do Everything seems to be what it's supposed yeah. to be. Just the results have not been there yet. Right. I think that will turn. But the defense... You 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 were spot on with that, and I don't I don't want to beat a dead horse there because even NYYST spoke about it last night. The defense yeah. is worrisome. Yeah, it's obvious. It's obvious, right? Oh, right there and, with him. And the other thing he said about about the judge, the pop out, judge. I don't think judge was also on a home run or nothing approach. I I, I I think if you Agreed. looked if you looked at that at bat, I mean, I, you know, Pete Pete's there. He called the game. Judge just missed that. He did. That, he just. He, I've been he saying this all that. year. And I think you're going to agree with this. Mm -hmm. Judge's issue has been timing. His issue has yeah. not been nothing else. And it hasn't been, oh, my God, he's swinging and missing. He looks miserable. He's chasing. He looks lost or something. It's, no. It's been all about timing and for bro. Judge. You can see it. He is just off. And once that clicks, you're going to say, damn, Judge got four home <laughs> runs this week. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's Judge. 
well, two years. And, and why? And why do you think the timing is an issue? Where Where do players put the most work in on their timing? If spring not training. spring training, yeah, he missed a large chunk of that. So the timing yeah. is something that's going to come down the line, probably no right when you said it would. That's what I think. I still say the 15th, and I think that second. I, I think by the time the month is over, and we do a nights at the round table, the end of this month that we we break down, you know, where the Yankees are, what they're doing. I think we're going to look at it and go, it was a tale of two months. It was a tale of two uh, of a month with with two different results. You had the first half that was miserable. Second half, that was back to being Aaron Judge. And I mm -hmm. think that is what you're going to see. I, I'm not concerned with Judge. He's walking. He, he's not having horrible at-bats. He's not just rolling over immediately. He is literally just off on his timing. And I feel like if you watch it daily, it's as clear as day to see that. But let's keep the voicemails going. We got about two, four, six. We got about seven voicemails to get through. Let's go to the next one. Hey, Pete. Fast Eddie. Uh, I'm working all day, so I didn't see any news till now. They got uh, this guy now. He's stealing over sixteen million dollars from Otani. This guy's not some criminal mastermind. You know, he, <laughs> he's an interpreter. I, I don't see how this all lands on him. How could anybody? I mean, Otani must have more than one person looking out for his money. I mean, now they're trying to make it like he's the dupe. He didn't know any better. Blah blah. That's all bullshit, man. This guy's the fall guy. I don't care what they say. Hey, 16 million is a lot of money, man. I'm missing 16 bucks out of my account. I'm making phone calls. So <laughs> I don't know, bro. I know it's off topic probably from what you're going to do tonight, but uh, I just, I cannot believe this $16 million bullshit. I just don't believe it. All right, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Also, too, we'll, we'll be seeing Fast Eddie on April 20th. I can't wait to I see Fast can't Eddie and his wait. wife, Elise. <laughs> that is going to be, that might be, uh, that's definitely one of the highlights of, of the day that I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But um no I mean look Francis is our in investigative journalist over here so <laughs> I mean look I'll I'll say this really quickly and I, I don't know if everybody saw the stuff that Passon put out with like the the transcripts of the conversations and text bro I don't know about you I feel like Epe's part was almost scripted I've never heard a dude go hey brother <laughs> it's all over for me man <laughs> I'm done that's it come on brother come on brother <laughs> come that's on, like me brother. hitting you guys up. Hey guys, come on, brother. That's it. I'm gonna put my hat. It's over for me. It's over for me. It's like a movie scene at the end of a movie. Hold Listen. on. No, no, like, let go. It's it's over for me. <laughs> oh, yo, it's ridiculous. Listen, I gotta look. I, I with the Otani stuff, we've spoken about it, um, and I'm sure there'll be another time where we could even go more in depth on it. I think. Um, with the sixteen million dollar number, I mean, it started at four and a half million. Now they're going to sixteen million. Sixteen, yeah. The more that this stuff comes out, I feel like the more it just proves me right. A month ago, when I was yeah. like, their whole plan is going to be to turn Ipe into a terrorist. They're going to yep. make him into the worst kind of yep. person. They said his college degree was fake. Now he didn't steal four million. He stole sixteen. He gambled over a hundred and seventy million and whatever. I'm with Eddie here. I don't care how rich you are, sixteen million dollars. Sixteen million doesn't bro. move without you feeling it or Correct. somebody being alerted somehow, some way. And I'll leave it at that. It just, it just does not, it does not add up. It doesn't add up at all. And who the hell knows what's ever going to come of this? But nah, man, Francis was spot on. I, I've been given, I've been giving him flowers on that for a minute because he Facts. said exactly what they're going to do to Ipe, and they did. Yep. And you know, Ipe was immediately turned into Osama bin Laden. So <laughs> literally. Yeah. It's it crazy, is, bro. It is what it is. It is what it is. Joey Likey. <laughs> Joey from the Bronx. Well, I'll tell you what Joey doesn't like. Okay. He doesn't <laughs> like everybody piling on Aaron Judge and going into a panic at, at a, attack. Fair game. I mean, this is really starting to piss me off. Leave Aaron Judge alone! <laughs> I mean, there's one thing, though, that does worry me, and that is the possibility of a lingering oblique problem or, or his toe. I mean, if they ever told me that I would be this worried about another grown-ass man's big toe, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> but other than that, if that's not, a, if that's not an issue, this guy's going to be... 
more than fine. This is Aaron Judge. He's the greatest hitter in the world. So everybody just calm the fuck down, all right? Yeah. Just calm the fuck down and smack it the like like and hit it in the sub sub. And that's it. That's all you got to <laughs> do. All right. Talk to you later. Joey, Joey from the Bronxy Bronxy. You're not wrong, man. You're not, you're not, not wrong. wrong. You're not yes. wrong. There, there's a, there's a lot of panic right now out there from Judge. And look, you know, the Yankees are 10 and 3. The, the way I vision it, and I want to see it, and Mike DeLaGuardia, we got you on the on the Super Chat. The The way that I want to see this is that the Yankees have missed Cole. They have missed Aaron Judge being Aaron Judge. Carlos, the fucking dog, Rodon. Looks like Carlos Rodon again. The starting pitching has been good. Marcus Stroman has really been everything we wanted Marcus Stroman to be. And can we all just sit here for a second and recognize that this is not the Yankee team of two years ago, of three years ago, of, of Aaron Boone's first year in 2018. This team is no longer the suit and tie buttoned up corporate New York Yankees. You see a bunch of guys out there that are allowed to be who they are and having a good time. I don't know if you've noticed this, Francis, either. They're also wearing cleats that don't even go with the uniform necessarily. Yeah. Like they're wearing yellow cleats and mm-hmm. and and cleats with different colors on it. A lot of colors. On yeah. a daily basis. And look, I, I get where some fans can go, that doesn't fit the uniform. It doesn't look great. What I want to tip my cap is that George Steinbrenner's time isn't today's time. And that's not a knock on George. George bought the Yankees, what, in the 70s? Mm-hmm. And the, the entire, basically the entire time, the world is a lot different now. Oh, yeah. What back in the 70s, what, you know, clean look was is very different than what it is now. You can have a trim beard and be business like you could go to work with a suit and tie and have a beard. It's not what it used to be. So I just want to applaud the Yankees in their front office for kind of dialing it back a little bit and saying, let these guys be who they are. Let them have fun. You saw when Soto homered, everybody yeah. doing a dance in the dugout like, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's nice to yeah. see again. We saw that with Cano and Melky back in the day. But what do the Yankees do? Too they much shut of it, it shit shut Melky it out. Yep. Shit mm-hmm. Melky out, shut it down. We don't need mm-hmm. that. It, it's a different time. This, this team is playing a lot more loose. They're a lot more excited. And look, they put the right personalities on this club. Not your Josh Donaldsons, who one was, to his credit, he's towards the end of his career. He was yeah. he was done. He was running out of gas. So yeah. it's kind of hard to be the, the hard-nosed dude when you're hitting 160 and the entire fan base can't stand you. It's exactly. kind of hard to be that dude. Yeah. Marcus Stroman walked into the Lions then as like, nah, man, I got you guys now. Yeah, I talked what I talked, but because I, I want to be here. And yeah. he's here now. And mm-hmm. fans appreciate it. Soto, Soto. Verdugo's Verdugo. This is this is a new style of club. And it makes this team very, very exciting to watch. And you want to root for them. You want to see them win. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, like, you, you, you said it perfect. I can't really add much on there. The only thing I will say... It makes this team that much more dangerous because when you play you with that level of looseness yep. and like free flowing, this is me, this is my energy. It's what when everybody's able to be exactly who they are, you're gonna see some fucking dogs. And that's why I love everything I've seen so far. Because that's that's what I want in October. Not the tight, Facts. oh my God, I, I gotta, you know, show up buttoned up. I gotta do this. Yep. I gotta no no. In October, the teams that win, the teams that find success are the teams that stay themselves. And that's what that's going to be big if the Yankees are able to do that. No doubt. Mike Delaguardi with the Super Chat. You're the best around. Nothing's going to ever keep, keep you down. down. You're the best. He says, Sal knows that this is this is not Major League T-ball, right? No, I don't think, I don't know if Sal knows that at all, to be honest with you. But let's keep the voicemails going. I want to get to everybody's before we wrap up today's show. Here we go, baby. <laughs> my two king in the hills. <laughs> Silver We're one week away from the event, which has been a year in the making, and NYYU is going to take Yankee Stadium in a storm of madness. Everyone will know who we are, because if you ain't joining the movement, you're going nowhere. <laughs> and to those who disagree, disgrace, and don't recognize, I got two words for you. Suck it! The Yankees are facing the Cleveland Indians tonight because the Guardians sound like a bust of ten packs, dig it. And we need to keep winning series and doing our thing by shaking off losses and punching in the next day, yeah. 
<laughs> and to the team across town, congrats on winning a couple of games. You get the fuck you of the day. Yeah. I have to acknowledge that you have the most championships in April. And your fans and media marks set the record for talking the most shit without the physical and mental capacity to back up anything you say. And while you're scoreboard watching the Yankees in the middle of your games, we don't do the same because the Yankee fans don't think about you. We're too busy winning, yeah, and watching our so-to. Oh, yeah! Mark out! There it is. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like him. Ain't nobody no, like him. He's the fucking best, man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> should, that, should that be like our new motto? If you don't join the movement, you're going nowhere. <laughs> I love it. I, lo I absolutely love it. And we got to clip that. You're going nowhere. <laughs> if you're not down with NYU, you ain't going nowhere, you're damn going it. Forget nowhere. your life. Give it up. Give it up. You are not love, going love, anywhere, damn it. Uh, Macho said something in there. Um, he said that NYU was taking over. Um, I think we actually got something coming that might be even bigger. Uh, than than what we got working right now. So that if anybody, that's a little teaser. That's a little teaser alert for you guys. Uh, we got actually, I think it's two. We got two announcements to make on 420 that we're gonna release on Twitter and all that stuff. So people who aren't visiting, who aren't at the event, could also see it too. But there's two things that we're working on that is gonna be really really awesome. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. Uh, so stay tuned. Not only is is 420 gonna be an amazing day. We also got some amazing announcements to make for that day. Also, two guys, do me a favor. Smack that like. We are not at 100 likes yet. We got to blow past that number. Let's get to the next voicemail. What up, Pete? Yo. Um, I got to say, man, that, that, that off day yesterday was depressing, but it's okay because we got six days in a row of Yankees baseball. So we're back. Um, we got Cleveland for three days. Okay. I expect Schmidt to have a good day today. We're going against a 37-year-old washed up Carlos Carrasco. I'm expecting a win today. I know Cleveland has been doing good. I don't know what their schedule has been, but I'm sure it's not as bad as ours, so they might have gotten lucky with some easy wins there. But uh, I expect to see Wells two, maybe even three out of these three days. I know – Aaron Boone loves Trevi. He's got to get Trevi in there, but we, we we need more Austin Wells. We need Judge to get hot, and we need we need to start getting back to where we were in that that Houston Houston D back series, where where there, there there was there was no way out of of what we do. All right, I'll see you later, Pete. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, and a little more. A uh, thank you. Uh, let's keep them going, guys. We got a few more to get through. Pete. Chat. Good morning. Louise Hill on a hill. Damn, it's been a while since I've talked to you. It feels like it. It's been a while since I've watched the Yankees. Since a month has passed. Okay. Anyways, I'm hyped for tonight. Let's get the series dub against the Guardians. One game at a time. Uh, Let's hope the offense, whole offense gets clicking. Yeah, let's go Yankees. Not much to say right now. Excited for the game. All right. Let's do it. See ya. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. And fucking Anthony Garcia says, NYYU is buying the Audi Club. Can you imagine? That's <laughs> it won't the, be. That's I'll place. tell you one thing. That's it wouldn't be called the Audi Club anymore. Mm -mm. It's going to be the Simonetti Club. <laughs> Shit. Damn. Let me tell you, man. Hirsch, Hirsch one day said that to me. He's like, Pete, look him over there, man. One day. It's going to have the NYYU logo there. Shit. Let me tell you right now, if that's the case, babe, I'll do an elbow drop from the top of the stadium. Like, if, <laughs> if I'm like 90 and I'm done, I'll just bet guys, like, put me up there and let me just go right down. <laughs> let me just do an Let me, like, my last hurrah. Let me just do an elbow drop from the top. And they're like, there he goes. And just play in the sound system. Hey. <laughs> yes, he goes down. And that's it. Rod Thompson with the super chat. He goes, um, what does Luis Hill project as once he puts it all together? Be a, a mid to mid to top rotation guy if he does. I mean, yeah. he got the stuff for it. How do you not, you know, how do you not see that for him? Yeah. If if he figures out if he figures out his control, if he figures out control, you're looking at an ace. I 100%. I'm not I'm not uncomfortable going on record saying that if he finds a way 
to get the the wildness and the walks under control, you're looking at an ace. If not, he's still at worst a three. Yeah. And that's the and that's the great thing about him. But once let's just hope he could build up those innings and manage the workload. That's the one thing with him. And that's that, what we that have got to hope for. Yeah. That's it. That's all. Yo, Luis Hill on a hill. I I gotta apologize. That's why I'm calling back in. To Sir Francis Lee. Man, I didn't know you were gonna be on the show this morning. All right, I gotta lock in. Sorry, my bad. What's up, Francis? How you doing, man? All right. What's up, bro? See ya. That's uh, always appreciate- nice. That's that always was, nice. That's, that's, that's nice. love, man. I appreciate it. Louise Hill that's, on the Hill, man. Love it. That Louise Hill on a Hill. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a it's a beautiful this community. There's nobody like it. Nobody like There's it. There's nobody like this community, and, and, right? And it's if that simple. And, and if you're not a part of it, you're going, you're going nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> you're going nowhere. If you're not a part of NYU, you're going nowhere. I might end that to the end of the the end of the like the outros and stuff. Join the movement, join the fam, join the you. If you don't, dot dot dot, you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. <laughs> Just leave it there. Good morning, fellas. It's Matt. Good morning, Matt. One thing I have a question about. Okay. Is Aaron Judge. Are we going to see Aaron Judge in this series start to break out and start to hit the the ball to the damn moon? Um... Yeah, so if I can get your guys' opinion on that, that would be great. Um, another thing, uh, any more news on Cole and the update, any updates on his arm and towing program and things of that nature? All right, guys, take care. It's Matt. Have a good morning, and God bless the United States of America. All right, peace. I had the, I had the, yeah, I had it quickly. My man, my man does the presidential outro and stuff. I love it. I'm like, Absolutely. I gotta immediately like, like take my hat off and do a salute yeah. real quick because I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on a second, you know, yeah, you know, Pete with his patriotism, you know what I mean? I'm, I am legitimately Captain America, so. You know, you gotta uh, put me on a spot like that. I can't be seen not doing it. If Francis knows I sing the national anthem. Oh yeah, every game. Very seriously, and Very God serious bless America. Gotta, and God bless America. Yeah. So you know, got to do what we got to do. Only thing uh, I can, you know, only thing I want, I want to say the Matt with this uh, current series with the Guardians, I do like the, uh, I like the pitchers who Judge is gonna have the, yep. you know, the luxury of facing. I think. Carrasco is not a guy who should be too hard for him to solve. Uh, Tristan McKenzie is a is a young arm from that Cleveland system, aka yep. T Mac. I I actually am a fan of his. Um, I like I like his style. I like the way he approaches the game. I think as a right handed pitcher, he's another guy who Judge shouldn't have an issue, you know, solving finding a way to hit. And then we get Logan Allen on day three, who's a lefty. Um, and you know, I don't I don't know too much about him, but again, young ERAs uh, up over four and a half. To mm-hmm. start the season, so shouldn't be a guy that Judge is gonna have a problem with. Wouldn't shock me if Judge, you know, takes this series and has 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 a good one. Yeah, no, he definitely needs it. And then Matt also brought up Garrett Cole. Last thing we heard is that he did some throwing, mm-hmm. and um, he felt good. I mean, that's yeah. that's the only thing that we're getting right now from the Yankees. You're probably not gonna receive too many updates. Um, I, I for me, I just leave it at this. I am waiting. I'm waiting on Garrett Cole to to like throw an actual bullpen, like to be mm-hmm. like you know Cole. He was hitting 93 today, 94, yeah. 95, and he comes out of that okay. Then I'm sitting there going, "All right, cool, all that's, right, cool." And that's that's the back. that's the smartest approach. Wait till he yep. throws a pen and see what he feels like two days after. Yep, mm-hmm. because I mean, and again, I don't know if everybody. I mean, look, the way I approach it is different than other people. I'm sitting there going, "This is the team we have." Whatever else we get is is great. If Cole comes back, great. I expect him back. Yes, I want him back. Of course, who the hell wouldn't? You need him back. Mm-hmm. But I'm also of the mindset Carlos Rodon needs to be who he is. Marcus Strong because he may not be back, and yeah. we got to ride with what we have. So that that's the way I'm approaching it. So I'm not yeah. overly upset or angry at any type of situation that may happen. Yeah, I agree. That's the best approach. I mean, you never, you never know what with, with friggin' injuries. You never you know how it goes, but you don't. Gotta, this season, and you can't, you can't call it this year. Agreed, agreed, one hundred percent. We got a big super chat from Jeff J. Uh, 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 
Uh. He says, morning, gents and NYU fam. Just back from our largest conference of the year, sipping a little 4Q in the big time at home. Looking forward to meeting many of you on 420. God bless NYYU. And let's go Yankees, okay? We're going right, to meet Jeff. a lot of people, man. I, I really, I just want to wrap up there, friends. I want to wrap up on why these events are so important for our community. You know, we do two of these a year. We're going to have another one, guys, in September. So I already told everybody about that. Uh, you're going to know a lot more about that over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're planning a, a something else with the New York Yankees that, again, you guys will know a lot more about in the next couple of weeks. But these events are so great because the one thing you can say about us that really nobody, I don't care who it is, nobody can say, nobody can say, is that we are so one with our community. When we say we have a community, we really do have a community. It's that Hirsch gets to meet Anthony Medina. Anthony Medina gets to meet Macho King. It's not like, oh my God, I want to go there and see Pete and Francis. And oh, it's cool because you get to put a face and a name to other people that are in your community that you guys are in here with every single day. It's not like you're in here with um, a bunch of people. I don't know who these people are behind the screen. You get to meet them. You get to know them. Um, you get to watch a game with them in person along with what we do every day. So the sense of community is important to us, and it's it's what the vision was from the very beginning is that the fans had to be involved in this in a very, very big way. True. And I'm proud to say what we have started to build would never happen if it wasn't for you guys in this chat and showing up to these events and being there with everybody and meeting everyone. It, it never It never would be able to happen. No. You're 100% right. Amen to that and to this community. I mean, absolutely, it's it's the absolute best. Uh, it's not something we just say. It's something that everybody on the team means wholeheartedly. Yep. Like, we do what we do for you guys, the fan. I mean, that's the slogan. Real talk for the real fan. It's, it's on the hat. I looked the wrong way. It's on the hat. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just something that we put out there because it sounds cute. It's, it's what NYYU is about. Yep. And there's no better place to experience that than at one of these events. So I'm super Correct. excited for next weekend because I miss I miss you I miss you guys in the community. A lot of you guys yep. I haven't seen for a while. I got to catch up with some of you down in Tampa and some of you last year, but I can't wait to see the rest of you and and I'm glad that we're, you know, going to be able to have another one later in the season so that yep. anybody who for whatever reason couldn't make this one, you get you're going to have your second shot. Yep. So just uh, you know, keep it locked and stay tuned, man, because this is this is absolutely the place to be. And Facts. we couldn't have said it better than Mach, man. If you're not no, a part of correct. it, <laughs> if you're not a part of it, in all honesty, you're going, you're going nowhere. nowhere. You're going <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. That's the best way yeah, to man. put it. But, you know, um, the other the other thing about this team is that uh, the, the people you guys see on camera every day, Francis, myself, Mario, Kev, Christian, SGR, Chris, Dane, Los, we all really enjoy each other's company. So it's funny because... I remember when Mario left and me and Kevin Jira in the house and Francis left the, the I think it, Francis left that afternoon. Mario left that night or that going into that morning. Mm -hmm. So it was like, everybody was leaving and was sitting there going, I miss these fucking guys already, man. <laughs> like, damn, like we've been gone for like a couple of hours. It's like, a couple oh, I miss hours, these yeah. guys. where are my guys at, man? Why they left? They yeah, should have just stayed another day or two. But, <laughs> um, nah, man, we, we get to catch up with each other again and, and oh, have yeah. a lot of fun. So, Again, guys, appreciate you for hanging out with us today. And, of course, this was Francis Lee's first um, All Rise. Francis so, Fridays, baby. Francis Fridays. Make it a thing. Okay. <laughs> Smack you the like. Hit the sub. Okay, just saying. We're 50 subbies away from 24-6. Uh, if there's a game tonight, you guys know we got it covered for you. And, of course, the post-game show. So, with that being said, guys, we are out. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you a little bit later today. Peace, baby. Can't make a promise, but I do my best. 25 sitting on 25 racks. Just got started, no, we ain't done yet. But a new crib, that's a goddamn flex. A goddamn flex. Sign that check. Told them last year that I've been up next. Can't take calls, but I send that text.